now, um, I heard there's 107 people pre-registered. Wow. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's Jennifer Brennan and Bill Ruenberger. And um, we're getting, we've got 10 minutes to go until, oh, we've got two, another person. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. We have two minutes to go, or two minutes. We have um, eight minutes to go before we launch. And um, so look, um, I, I've, I've learned the magic. And the trick about the email that gets sent out to everyone with the link, and there's the, the handout is, is at the very top of the email and you don't really notice it. And, and but so you click on that and it's, it's a Word document or it might be a PDF file that comes down, but they're all in that same email. A lot of people don't know how to find the, um, the, the handout, but um, this is what it looks like when you download it, okay? So, um, and it, it has all of, all of the notes, all of, anything you're gonna see on the PowerPoint screen is in these notes. So saves you time, um, you know, you know take, taking notes and it saves your arm. And then we're gonna do the presentation and then um, stay for all your questions and answers um, afterwards. And so we li I like to request people to um, put their questions in the Q&A area, not the chat box. It's easier for us to keep, um, keep them organized when we're answering them. And we'll stay here as long as you have uh, questions. So, so, um, and, 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 so, and so I don't do a lot of repetition. Um, I'll just be quiet for a few minutes. And it, it looks like everyone's logging in. Welcome, welcome, Jennifer Brennan and Bill Ruenberger. And can you tell that um, Bill is 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 a retired person, which is 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 a distinguished looking. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and share the screen because it's kind of fun. I'm going to put one of a slide up of us. Okay, here we go. This is what we want to share. Okay, so this way you know you're at the right uh, sign in. It's the fall lawn care. The fall lawn care. I have a fun slide since we're, um, you know, we're 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 actually um, killing time. Uh, well, I have to do this. I have to put this here, and then I can do this. Okay, this is what Bill and I look like. Um, what do you what do you think? Oh, twenty. At least twenty. Twenty-five. Yeah. Twenty or twenty-five years ago, you know. So so so, and we were doing this lecture. Uh, you can tell it was a fall lecture to see how sun sunburned we are or <laughs> sun toasted. We're sun toasted, so it's you know you can tell it's the fall lecture rather than um, than the, yeah. the the spring lecture. Oh wait, it is. It's two thousand three. We were sweet young things back then. <laughs> so so that that's uh, well that's not long ago. That's just that. Right. This is twenty two. That, that's only 19 years. 19 years ago. That's yeah. not so bad. Yeah, you not haven't so changed bad. a bit. You know what? I'm lucky because um I well, I don't know if I'm lucky, but um I, I I am kind of forced from being raised in the South. And I I, I could never go without hair color. So <laughs> because if I would go without doing my hair color, I have eight great aunts who would arise from their graves. And they would haunt me at night. So, you know, so, 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 so I, I it, it kind of helps when you do the same color over and yeah. over and over again. No one can tell, no one can tell, you know, so, so, uh, but I also, I also, am, I, I'm, I'm really lucky. I, I, I had, I have, I come from a long line of genetics where people always look younger than, than they really were. Yeah. So, so I, I have one of those Dorian Gray portraits up in the attic. And um, and and I I I am I'm, I'm really a worry to go ever look at it. So I just don't. <laughs> so okay. See when but when we're on here, we don't get to see how many people have signed up already. Yeah. So so let's go back. Let's go back. So you first people that signed on got to see kind of an early part of this of the show. All right. So ooh, we've got ten people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Jennifer Brennan the horticulture information specialist at Chalet. And this is Bill Lewenberger. And he uh, was the former um, head of the soil and turf um, department 
of, um, of the Chalet Landscape Division. And um, he is renowned. He's, he was one of the top lobbyists for, and what is the name of the organization now? It changed names. Well, now, oh, the NELP. Uh, NELP, okay. National, uh, it, when I was, when I retired, it was still, um, they called it Planet. Right. Uh, but now it's National, I don't know, Association of Landscape professionals like yeah that. yeah and but but he 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 is instrumental he's he is renowned um nationwide for all the great work that he has done and that he did for the turf industry and um you know and and making sure that you know that we were able to keep using the fertilizers that we use and the herbicides that we use and um and then also instrumental in in introducing um, to all of our chalet customers um, using organically based um, fertilizers and, um, and and other controls. So this man, this man is incredible. He's, he's incredible. But I'm retired, which is kind of nice. <laughs> you rub it in, rub <laughs> I, it in. I work Whoa. on So I go out and look at lawns and and help in that respect. But uh, one day a week is enough. Yeah, I uh, know me about it. Um, at least, at least we're only working five days a week right now. Yeah. But for the longest time, exactly. we were, you know, we're we're agricultural. Mm -hmm. You know, you make hay while the sun shines. So, yeah. you know, during the peak season, you know, I'm here six days a week. You know, so you know, so um, so. But but this is one. I, I I'm gonna kind of maybe go on on a limb a little bit here. But I I think this is the most important. You know, lawn oh, lecture that we could give in the year because. Um, everything we do in the fall is so instrumental and so critical to um, the success of your lawn going forward. And if you haven't done a lot of, you know, good maintenance work in the growing season, like, like spring and summer, you can really make up for a lot in the fall. And right. so we're gonna we're gonna talk about all those points. Right. And um, and and by the time you finish this, you know, with this, this webinar, um, you'll be telling your neighbors how to do it right. <laughs> so I just realized we have 24 people. Do you all know that we had 107 people um, pre-register for this? Incredible, absolutely incredible. And, and you know, I used to always um, mute my phone in, in the learning center and I still have to, I still have to do that, you know, now uh, because, um, you know, our phones make so many noises, you know? So, okay, let's all mute our phones. It's not as, it's not, it's not as critical as it was when everyone was sitting up in the learning center. And I have good news. I have good news. People have been asking if we're gonna start having live lectures again. And it looks like we're going to be doing it, you know, um, after the first of the year. Uh, we don't have the learning center anymore. It was converted into the uh, the employee. Um, it's it's our, our 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 original employee lunchroom was so small we couldn't use it during COVID. So they converted the learning center into uh, the employee. Um, um, they were calling it the lounge, and that's what that's what the ed center is now. But we're going to do lectures in the the chalet office plaza building, and that's that big white building that's on the north side of the parking lot here at Chalet. And there's a wonderful um, basement uh, auditorium. And so we'll be doing the, the, the live lectures there and then tempting you with really good coupons and discounts to get you to drive back up to the store or walk up to the store. So it's we, definitely an improvement. It, it is. The basement is really nice. It, 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 really, it really is, it really is. So, okay, I'm watching, watching. 34 people, welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are right there. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen again, and we'll we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome aboard. Oh, I'm gonna repeat before I do this that um, we're gonna do the presentation first, and then um, so you can type your questions in in the Q and A column. You know, right at the base of the screen. That works better for us than the chat box. So if you know if you do that, and then we'll stay as long as it takes to answer all your questions. All right, and hopefully all the information we talk about 
we'll answer your questions as we're going along. So let's do the share screen again. There we go. Oh, I got to go back to the start. Here we go. All right, here, I'll go back. Oh, I got to do this. No. Just when I think I'm, no, no. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is the fall on care. And we know everyone that's in this lecture has a lawn that looks like that. Right, right. You should see my backyard. It is horrible. I had the world's worst weed that I got rid of. And then because it was so hot, I didn't get my grass seed down. And so crabgrass took over. It is horrendous. And I have photos, but I was too embarrassed to put them in, 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 this, in the screen. Oh, well, one of the crabgrass pictures is from my lawn. Okay, everybody. So even horticulturists get bad lawns. But this is what we're striving for, right, right Bill? And this is down at, in Lamont, Illinois. And this is the Chicago Golf Course Superintendents Association. Right. And that, and this is their big building that they have. It's called the Golf House. The Golf House. Ooh, how yeah. appropriate. How appropriate. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. And then, then this is Bill and I um, back in 2003. And uh, we were doing the fall lawn care lecture a little bit earlier before everyone signed on. We were joking about how this had to be fall because we're both very sun toasted. You know, we're, we're you know very, we're very we're very sun toasted. But um, and and so a lot of the same a lot of the same products, just different di different labels. Yeah. That's Immunox that I'm holding. Okay, so so and I, I love to say we were just sweet young things okay. back then. You know, so, okay, so here we go. All right, I'm gonna let you do the outline. Right, reading the label is very important. Um, the, the situations that come out a lot of times is the fact that people kind of guess at things uh, or if they have a situation where say one of their children got into, um, in, into the pesticide um, uh, or, or an animal, a dog or what have you, you really need to know what's on the label. Um, part of it is one of it is a phone number, and when you call that number, they're going to ask you for. There's a couple uh, numbers on there. It's a, a EPA numbers, and we'll show you that in a minute. We're just right. going over the outline right now, so, so the next slide is going to be that slide. But okay. so that would be something that, uh, yeah, we'll get into that because the rest of this is. Um, it, it helps. What it does is it helps you choose the right even fertilizer, weed control. Uh, seeding and overseeding in a lawn, and you need to uh, uh, understand the aeration. So that's and, what's our outline. And is these are the things that are going to be the, the most important takeaways from this, you know, this presentation today. So, so we'll go ahead and get started with that. Okay. So, so this is yeah. this is a classic label on one of the uh, the best. A weed killer that we sell here at the retail store, and uh, and I'll let Bill talk about right. we circled all those things. You you can see the um, the phone number, and you can also see the EPA establishment number and the EPA regulate regulatory number. Those two numbers are needed if there is an, an accident with pesticides. My suggestion always is to pull out the label and read through even all the the. Um, uh, the caution, precautionary, uh, what to use as far as your um, gloves or, or what they call PPE. You need to constantly um, try and be aware of the fact that these are the, these are chemicals, and you want to make sure that you handle them properly. One other thing that I just wanted to mention about it is, a lot of times you'll look on a label and it's going to tell you something to the effect of. Um, the the uh, the amount you say it might say two ounces in enough water to cover a thousand square feet. The reason it says that and doesn't tell you an exact amount of water is because water is strictly a carrier, and it's not a really a dilutant. It's a carrier, and what it does is it'll if the the manufacturer doesn't know if your sprayer. Uh, can put a thousand uh, a gallon per thousand square feet or three gallons per thousand square feet. So you have to know that how much you're actually putting down, so you can get the exact amount down for that. And we at the retail store are usually really good about telling you what settings to, right. to if you're going to use a hose and sprayer, or if you're going to mix it yourself. We're really good about translating 
you know, and 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 the, 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 all the information on the label for you. But we just wanted to make sure you knew, you know, what to look for. So those are those circles. So you have the the active ingredients. Those are the AI. They call that the AI or active ingredients. That's that's the, the oblong at the top, and then the um, the phone number and the EPA number are circled in that big the big circle in in the middle. So so and so then. Now, again, what, what it tells you is how to use the product safely and effectively, how to store it safely, um, any first aid instructions, they're all on the back label. And I should have taken a picture of the back label. And, and then there's also phone numbers to call you know, to help you with, you know, with more information. Um, I always joke with people that if you have trouble sleeping, just take one of these bottles oh, and, and 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 read the whole label on the back side. It's about it's about ten to twelve pages, right. and you know of that little that little square. But it, it definitely will put you to sleep. You know, it, it'll definitely put you to sleep. But but it, all that information you need is is on those labels. So we always say always read the label just at least to tell you the amount to use per um, you know five hundred square feet or a thousand square feet. Most instructions are based on that <coughs> that area and. Um, now, the selective weed killers that you're going to see at, at the retail store, in the retail store, uh, the, the two that we like to you know, promote the, 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 the most often for, um, for killing the weeds in your lawn is, and, and they're, what's so interesting is everything you do, all the diseases, all the insects, and the fertilizers are, are, are based, and how they're used are based on the temperatures and there's air temperatures and there's soil temperatures. So our favorite for the growing season is the Bonide brand chickweed clover and oxalis killer. And it comes in a concentrate, that's a smaller bottle on the, 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 the left-hand side of that photo. There's a ready to use spray bottle and then there's a gallon spray bottle. And then, and, and that, that has got the active ingredients are down at the bottom of the screen, triclopyr, Mecaprop, or they also call that MC, uh, MCPP, and then dicamba. All right, then the one on the on the, the left of the screen is also from Bonide, and it's called Weed Beater Ultra. And Weed Beater Ultra does not have triclopyr in it. It has MCPA, Mecaprop, dicamba, and carfentrazone. And those chemicals work when the temperatures are cooler. So if you're killing things in the spring and, and when temperatures are low, like this spring was the classic example, uh, we were three weeks behind schedule on the accumulated amount of heat and they call that degree days. And so this, the Weed Beater Ultra would have been the best one to use for those dandelions that were you know, waking up just as your lawn was waking up. So remember that they're, they're controlled by uh, temperature, that cell temperature, as well as air temperature. So anything you want to add about the Not a carpentrazone in that is, is an excellent product, too. It speeds up the death process. So that's a really good. It's excellent. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it's excellent. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, will come in and say, well, I've always used a product called Weed Be Gone, you know, and, you know, and how are these different? And the difference between things like Weed Be Gone and these are the active ingredients. Weed Be Gone does not have carpentrazone. Weed Be Gone does not have triclopyr. So that's that you have to make sure you understand the active ingredients, okay? And then, oh, now we're moving on to fertilizer. Right. And um, um, there's two applications remaining, the fall, early fall and winterizer. And I'll let you talk about the importance of those. Well, the Right now, what you would be putting down as far as a fall fertilizer really helps in the photosynthesis of the plant uh, via the nitrogen. Uh, always remember that photosynthesis is the food or the sunlight to the grass plant is the food. And what, what you would put down as far as uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash, if you put all three of those down, that, that would be more like almost as if you're putting vitamins down. But yeah, like Building blocks. Building blocks. Those are the building blocks <clears throat> that the plants use when they're doing their processes, like metabolism in the roots right. and photosynthesis in the leaves. So they use those building blocks to put all their parts together and to do all their functions. Right, it utilizes everything mm -hmm. is what, what it does. The winterizer, it's it's been found now that uh, even using 
a little bit uh, heavier nitrogen in the winter does not add flush growth or, or uh, a lot of growth in the uh, green part of the plant. It actually absorbs that and uses that nitrogen the following spring and helps it come out of uh, dormancy much better. And it, it, it really, they use a lot of nitrogen to make roots. Right. You know, the roots and the, the, the underground stems are, are, um, are, are you know, rhizomes and tillers. You know, that they use that to, to thicken. Anytime you can give uh, the turf plants or the grass plants the building blocks this time of year, and with the shorter days and the cooler nights, the signals are going from Mother Nature to say, okay, grass plant, um, instead of putting all your energy into the blades, we want you to put all that energy into the underground stems that are running and filling in and thickening up that whole that whole turf area. But it secures the carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, this is our, well, my favorite. I was going to say Chalet's favorite for many, many, many years. We call this the red bag. We call it the Espoma red bag. Um, lawn food. It actually is more burgundy colored than this bright red. Um, but what's great about this is this is an organically based fertilizer. It's safe for pets and kids. That's why it's on, on the label. You can see the picture of the, the cute golden retriever and the little boy. It's a slow release fertilizer. Uh, and so it's a slow release long term feed. So it, it lasts for a good eight to 10 weeks. It's juice. When we say juice, it has a little extra nitrogen that will help uh, the lawn green up a little more quickly. So it's a great way if you're used to using the synthetics, like the um, like the step you know, like the step four, like the Scott step four. Uh, if you're used to using those, this is the best one to switch over to using organics because you still get that wonderful green up. A lot of people don't like the slow effect of organics. So by by switching to this, this really does the trick. There's no phosphorus. Because by law, there's no phosphorus in lawn fertilizers unless you're planting seed. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. And the formula on this, NPK is 1505. So right here. Oh, then, then Bonite also produces the winterizer. And it's a 12015. So it has that high um, phosphorus. Um, excuse me. Father. Pot, you know, potash or potassium, the, the numbers are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The high potassium, potassium is the element in the cellular wall structure. And so if you have more um, of the potassium or potash, the plants and you know, when they're forming their roots and their, their blades, they have very strong cell walls because of all that ex, extra uh, potash. So it makes them more resilient to cold, and cold temperature swings, uh, you know, back and forth, and you know, and and also more disease resistant. So, so th this is this is a good one. To, to, right, and the to twelve percent nitrogen is high enough, so it builds it for the following year. Excellent, yeah. So. And then the best time to use this, and uh, we we oh, I didn't bring a copy of it. it. It's in it's in the slides later. We have the 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 calendar, and you can get a copy of that always at the handouts um, at the, the plant clinic desk where my microscope is. But um, we, we recommend four different fertilizers uh, applications a year. The early spring, which is April 15, Memorial Day, which is May 31st, all the way into June 15. And then uh, Labor Day is, we say anywhere from August 15 to September 15. We used to say that, but you have new research saying that it's much better from the 1st of September up to the 15th right. of September. Again, because the shorter days exactly. and the cooler, the cooler nights. And that's when the grass is really trying to... Yeah, it's using it. Yeah. yeah, it's using yeah. it. Um, and then the very last one, the winterizer, is Halloween, the 31st of October, into the, the, the first two weeks of November. And that's the perfect, the perfect application. Um, and, and I think on the winterizer, this is this is down to about a half a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet, don't you think? Yeah. But I'm, I'm, but I'm sorry, I'm talking turf talk. Yeah. I'm trying to impress Bill that I still know how to talk <laughs> turf talk. We'll move ahead. And then, then uh, uh, you know, other good options for winterizers uh, are the milorganite. And um, the milorganite is um, made from Milwaukee um, sludge. Oh. 
but and that the, the, the and, and, and the polite term for that is organic biosolids. Okay, so if you want to add good organic biosolids, apply melorganite, and it's a, it's wonderfully slow release. Um, you know, and and I'm sorry. Oh, there it is on the on the screen. It's a six two zero. So a pretty good amount of nitrogen, right? You know, for for an organically based nitrogen. And that's not bad too if you decide to put down seed, like in shaded areas where you're not worried about um, uh, rabbit or any sort of weeds coming. Sure, sure, sure. So that because it's a it's got two percent phosphorus. The the other the other um, nice fun thing about milorganite is it really um, repels rabbits and deer from your yard when you first apply it. So, so that's one of the benefits, you know, and, and, and there, there used to be some fun research about how um, if, you, if, 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 if you used it in, as the winterizer, it made your, your, your lawn more heat tolerant the next year. Are you still seeing that? I haven't heard of that. Yeah, that was, I, I always liked that. Now, NatureSafe is, is an, another company that our, 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 our landscape and cell turf division uses. And we used to sell it here at the store, uh, but it's an excellent, it's another wonderfully excellent organically based. Right. And, and, and you were instrumental in doing all the, a lot of the research right. for that company. Yeah, so, nature say that it feeds probably the most microbes of any organic granular fertilizer on the market. Yeah, it's, it's excellent. It's a really good product. Now this, this is a, a new product that, um, that has been, I think, incredible. I love this product. And what, what is, why it's wonderful is it has an active ingredient in it called mesotrione. And mesotrione is the active ingredient in, in tenacity. And tenacity was developed 21 years ago um, to be able to control creeping bent grass in bluegrass and um, fescue and rye, and rye, perennial rye lawns. And um, four years ago, the company that invented mesotrione, Syngenta, um, developed the granular form. And Scott's got the right to um, use it in its products uh, for nine years. That's how the chemi chemical industry works. Something gets new and people can bid on it to have the exclusive use of it. So to give them, you know, that competitive edge. But so we, we figured this out. So it's called Scott's Step 1 for Seeding. They also have a, a, a second one that is called Scott's Triple Action um, for Seeding. And I'll show you a photo of that too. But the cool thing about it is it burns the chlorophyll out of creeping bent grass. And it also does the same thing to nimble will. It will kill nut sedge and it prevents any of the nutlets from you know, starting in the soil and it prevents any of the seeds of nut sedge from germinating. But it doesn't affect grass seed. So you can put this down, get rid as a pre-emergent in the spring or now, and 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 get these excellent nutrient levels of like 21% nitrogen, 22% phosphorus, and 4% potassium. Potassium. This is phenomenal stuff. I love this. Yeah. It it, it really does the job. And, and then what's cool is after you put it down, the grass all starts greening up, but all of the creeping bent grass turns white. And so you can actually see where it's working. So cool. So cool. Okay. Now fertilizer. The basics on fertilizer, there, there are major nutrients. That's the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. And I always like to teach people this, that nitrogen is think of the green parts of the plant and, and stems for, for woody structures. Phosphorus is for roots, flowers, and fruit. And the potassium is that cellular wall structure, good, nice, healthy. Now, micronutrients are just as important, and, but at, at much smaller levels. And those are things like you know, iron and um, um, magnesium, calcium, molybdenum, zinc, and there's like 11 right. more. Right. There's a whole bunch. And, and what's interesting, I'm kind of jumping ahead on the slide here, is, is that calcium and magnesium, if you have a calcium, we're always striving to have a cal-mag ratio of seven to one. And our soils, because of the way they were made during the ice age or created during the ice age when all the rocks were being broken down. Our cells are so high in magnesium 
You never have to worry about overdosing on calcium. Right. It's really a cool thing. Now, and then if you have a 7-1 CalMag ratio, you, you can reach a neutral pH. And our soil is so high in pH that, and, and what, what makes that important is, is that all of the, the, the nutrients bind to the cellular, to the, the soil particles. And the higher the pH, the tighter they're bound. The lower the pH, like seven, the more they're released into the cell solution. So that's why pH is a big deal. And, and I oversimplified that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then I'm gonna let Bill talk about synthetics and organics as he's the one that taught me the big difference. Well, okay? the, your synthetic fertilizers are basically considered a salt. And what ends up happening is, is when it's put into the soil, it has the tendency to kill off some microbes. I, mean, I don't want to make it sound like all the microbes are dead. It, that's not the case. But what it does, uh, synthetics adhere to the soil, and that's how the roots, the, the, your um, grass roots can take up the, the fertilizer. The grass itself doesn't know the difference on nitrogen between synthetic and, and organic. It's the soil that makes the difference. When you use organics, you end up with more microbial ac activity. No matter what organic you use, it's going to help the microbes. And microbes are good also in controlling some diseases. They, they're, um, organics are just a great thing to get into your soil. Um, and in some cases, if you're seeing a lot of diseases, like on the bottom line there, it says best to apply monthly. You'd wanna do that, especially if you're seeing soil-borne diseases, and we'll get into the soil-borne yeah. diseases later, but that's, uh, that, that it in encourages the, the microbes to go after some of the, the diseased mycelium. Yeah. So, and, 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 and to be honest, the, the plants could care less whether you're right. using synthetic or organic. All they, all they care about is when all those components break down, then, uh, then they can absorb it out of the soil solution. So they could care less. It's right. it, again, it's the soil and the soil microbes that, that it, it's a big deal for. And the nice thing is, um, the synthetics are are based on the organics, and but and they're layered, 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 layered particles that are designed to last eight weeks, eight to ten weeks. Anytime there's water, a layer dissolves off and goes into the soil solution. So that's why the numbers on synthetics are so much higher. You always say like thirty two percent nitrogen, where you would never ever see like the the the, uh, the the high nitrogen on the red bag from Esfoma 15, that's high because of the extra nitrogen that's added. But um, but anyway, the, you know, synthetic and organic, it, it's a, it's an it's an interesting science. Yeah, as long as you're feeding your lawn, I mean that that will make the difference. But if you start with organic, you stick with organic. So mm -hmm. if you if you're going with synthetic, you stick with synthetic. Yeah, I I always used to tell. Let me go back real quick. I used to always do the analogy that when you used um, the synthetics, it was like giving a man a fish. And, and you know, so, you know, he got to eat. Um, but if you use organics, it's like teaching the man to fish because then you have an ongoing right. or, you know, microbial system in the, in, in the soil that's breaking down organic matter and always providing food. Right. So, you know, so it's like teaching anyway. So, okay, here we go. Now, I, I I forgot to mention this. I, I I did I did a segment with ABC TV this morning with Tracy Butler, and we always talk for many many years. We've always talked about the eads of September, and that's feed, you know, apply feed or feed weed and seed. And so we're on the second ead here. This is the weed control. So really early early fall is the best time for controlling broadleaf right. weeds. Um, just because you can use any of the herbicides and you don't have actively metabolizing landscape plants. So, and, and you don't have the high temperatures in case those chemicals would volatilize and drift in. So this is the best right. time. Yeah, most of your weeds are up and, and they get encouraged to, to, because it's cooler weather, they start growing more actively. And you're and, the one that taught yeah. me about them, about the weeds taking carbohydrates right. in and storing them. Right. You know, so, so that's a uh, ideal uh, timing for that because they're moving they're 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 doing the last of the photosynthesis and they're making the carbohydrates 
and they're in the process of storing everything in their roots. And so if you spray with an herbicide, they're in the action of taking all those carbohydrates down. And guess what? The herbicide gets take down more, it gets pulled down more quickly and the weeds die more quickly. It's right. so cool. And the ground ivy, I'm sure we'll talk about this later. Uh -huh. Ground ivy is after the first heavy frost or freeze, the ground ivy is one that really likes to take it down uh, build the carbohydrates over the winter. So it's been known that even after a first freeze, if you spray it, spray your uh, ground ivy with uh, um, an aster type fertilizer, which is uh, chickweed clover. Chick -weed and, clover. And, and, and I'm going to translate, yeah. um, and I should have, I realized I should have done that in parentheses in the slide. Ground ivy is, 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 the, is, is a nice name for creeping Charlie. And I hate uh -huh. creeping Charlie. So, okay, so here we go. And th these are the different types of weeds we're gonna be, right. you, know, you have to be aware of. You know, there's annual weeds, there's perennial weeds, there's lawn weeds, there's weeds in planting beds, when they, you know, there's prevention, there's removal, and then you have to understand the difference between grassy weeds and broadleaf weeds. And we're gonna kind of cover the whole thing. Um, th this, is, this is, oh, let's talk about clover. A lot of people think clover's bad, you know? And yeah, they think clover it's bad. is. Unless you don't like its look, it's very good in your lawn. It, it actually um, puts uh, nitrogen back into the soil. And I was shocked to learn in my studies that in the, many years ago, especially the lawns over in England, they were, they were probably a third clover seed and two thirds grass seed. Right. And because, and then it, it was mixed together. And so then the, the clover, is a legume plant and it fixes nitrogen. So it produces the nitrogen. So they, they work together in a nice setting. So, so it's too bad that, that we've gotten away from understanding that. And you know, well, a, lot, a lot of people don't like clover in their property because it, it, uh, when it flowers, it attracts bees. And they say, you know, the kids are walking through. Right, and, right, right. And that's the on, but, uh, but that was the old day. Right. Those were the olden days because now right. everybody wants pollinators, right? right? I mean, the trend is to, you know, it's the right. plant for pollinators. Just so, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so now this is probably the big bad guy. This, you know, the, and, 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 you know, I, I you know, it, crabgrass is a warm season annual um, grassy weed and it makes millions of seeds right millions of seeds it tends to grow flat and 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 wow. prostrate and so it grows over the 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 good grasses and um and 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 it looks awful especially when the right. seeds and come its up. weed seed is uh it looks they call it finger like it's got mm -hmm. each yeah, little shine uh, yeah, it's hard to see, but yeah, yeah. I think even there, you oh, yeah, right there, it. right there. <laughs> yeah. no, that little itty bitty slide. Okay, so. but okay, confession, confession. These are photos of the crabgrass in my lawn where this, um, the BioAdvance Extreme Crabgrass Killer is laying that's in my backyard on top of a whole bunch of crabgrass. And then this is my curb on the front of my, at the, my front yard. And you can see how. It tends to germinate where it's warmer, so next to curbs, next to driveways, and you can see it's that green, green, and it tends to spread and you know and and, well, and the seeds get caught up. They blow on the on the concrete or or pavement, and they get caught right into that that area where the concrete is actually heating up that soil, and that's what they like it because they're warm season grass. And it germinates right there. Right. Okay, now here more. Here are more of the, oh, we'll go back real quick. So, so usually you're using a pre-emergent in the early spring and, and, you know, to prevent the crabgrass. And for many, many years, and since we're talking fall, I'm just going to do this quick. For many years, it was like the Scots uh, Turf Builder plus Halts, or you can also buy Halts. And then, but the newest form is that Scott Step 1 for seeding. And that's the classic one for preventing the crabgrass. Right, and crabgrass is an annual, so it does die off. It just reseeds itself. If you put a weed preventer down in the spring on proper timing, you shouldn't have any problem. It should kill all the seeds that would. And it's mostly it's mostly sunny areas. Right. You really don't have to worry about it in the shady shade. If you have a shady right. lawn. 
Now here, here's the Rocky Horror Picture Show of the common weeds. So we've got chickweed. And the bad thing about chickweed is it throws a lot of seed. Right. And, and this year, because we had a, 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 a normal amount of rainfall for April, that, uh, I think every weed seed in, in the lawn and the gardens germinated right. once it got so, so warm. And this is one that has so many seeds. So I love to do a pre-emergent, you know, to prevent this one. And, it, and one thing though, it's really a, a good one for pulling. Right. You grab a clump and it pulls a whole, you know, a whole, a whole right, clump right, out. Yeah, it's, mm. uh, and then uh, everyone knows dandelions. So right. we don't need to talk too much about dandelions. Although there has been a push to leave, uh, don't mow the lawns till Mother's Day so that, that weeds like dandelion can stay in bloom to help the pollinators. I, I don't, I do not support that. I think right. that is a ridiculous thing to do. Don't do that. Don't do and that. that is a uh, perennial. So yeah. the weed comes, that actual weed comes back every year. From a root system. Right. And then there's purslane. Purslane is, uh, is the most common in hot and dry locations. Right. And because uh, it's got that that succulent uh, that succulent um, you know leaf, and some people eat this. Have you ever eaten yeah, it? I have. They you, you you use the leaves and stir fry them, yeah. and um, and I, I've never tried it. I'll let you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then spurge, um, spurge. This is also um, um, Veronica. Veronica is the and and it, it's bad again. Hotter, sunnier, drier areas. But it, it grows low and it hugs the soil line and can crowd out the, the grass plants because of that. We saw a lot of this this year. Mm -hmm. And there's um, common spurge and there's spotted spurge. Spotted spurge, you'll see a little dot on the leaf. Okay. Uh, common the spurge is just a green leaf. But you know, it, irregardless of either one, you, you have to spray to control it. Exactly. And then now these are the difficult common weeds. So ground ivy or creeping Charlie, and the worst thing, the worst thing about it is, you know, it, 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 every node, wherever the leaves are attached, that's called a node, wherever a node touches soil, it will root in and start another plant. Right. So, right. so pulling it sometimes defeats the purpose because you're just pulling out one long vine. And once you rip that off, it stimulates the node that it started to root to, it, to, you know, to grow again. So, and again, this throws a lot of seed also. So, uh, and then Speedwell, oh, this is Veronica. Yeah. I goofed, Spurge is not, it's, it, it, yeah, it, Speedwell is the Veronica, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And again, another low grower, sunny location and hot, you know? And so we saw a lot of that this year right. uh, because of the, the temperatures that were over 85 for most of the, most of the summer. And then uh, the Nutsedge, Nutsedge is real common in our heavier clay soils and in, in areas where it tends to be a little moister, the, the moister areas. And um, the, the nutlets can stay dormant in the ground for up to five years. And you can see in the, 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 the small picture, just uh, uh, the second picture down, how the nutlets form on the roots. Unfortunately, if you hand pull this, it leaves the nutlets in the soil and stimulates them to grow. So, so times you get more, more nutsedge than you had before you pulled it. Exactly, and then and then the other thing that happens is if you've had any, if you if there's any digging that gets done on in your property, if your lawn or you know in your garden, then that activates the right. the nutlets or it brings this the the seeds up closer to the surface, and you'll get you, you the first the first weed that shows up is the is the nutsedge, and then they they're actually um, like a triangular shaped stem. If you cut a stem and you, you look at it, it's, it's, a tri it's a triangle, a triangle shape. Yeah, you can push it, take it in your fingers and, and move it back and forth and you'll feel the triangle uh, edges. edges. Mm -hmm. and, and then, yeah. and then it's, it's lighter green and it usually grows faster right. than the lawn. So, it, and so you, and you notice it, you, you right. notice it. So it, it, I, I, I really, I dislike nut sedge. Yeah. But, and that's why I was excited about, remember, Scott's step one proceeding right. will kill this, get rid of this. And then violets, this is, I mean, people think that violets are so pretty, you know, in their, in their gardens. Unfortunately, they have projectile seed dispersal. When the flowers finish and it forms a seed capsule, 
and they when they get when they get ripe they pop and then the seed can be thrown a hundred feet away from where the plant was growing so that's why you end up having it all over your lawn and then the problem also is they have little bulbs down in the soil they're called corms and they stick around for a long time they store a lot a lot of energy so you when we with the difficult common weeds the reason we distinguish you might have to do two applications of the herbicide within two weeks to really to really knock them out and it's really best in spring mm -hmm. we found that fall the, the, the chemical gets lost in those forms and it doesn't go down to the meristem and actually kill yeah so we found that doing them in in spring right before they bloom or even during bloom oh. is the time to spray it. I and didn't know about the yeah, bloom thing. Yeah. Cool. That, isn't it great we have him here? Okay. So then there's grassy weeds too. And we saw a lot of that this year, a lot of both of these. We have the rough bluegrass and then we have the annual bluegrass. They germinate very quickly at cooler temperatures in the spring, really green up on any bare spaces that you might have in your lawn. And you think, oh my goodness, look how great the lawn looks this spring. But when it gets hot and, and, and dry, they, they turn brown quickly. Yeah. And many people think that they're seeing diseases. They're, they think they're seeing the fungal diseases when technically it's just these two um, annual grasses that are going dormant. So it, it, when it gets hot in, 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 the, in the spring. Now, let me ask you this. I'm glad we have Bill here. They're, they're claiming that Mesa Triumph takes care of this. Seriously? Yeah, but I, I think it's a- I love that. We use the liquid Mesa Triumph and um, you have to use it differently than you do going after bent grass. Oh. So, and it's, they're hard to, Sometimes that's hard to kill because a lot of it is gone. It's like bent grass. Mm -hmm. Bent grass is where there's a lot of uh, points where the grass is actually dormant and you put the chemical on it and doesn't control it. So some of that comes back. So it's one of those things where you have to do multiple applications. To, to prevent it. Right. Um, the, the, I, I, one thing that does prevent this is if you get if you get uh, like halts down trifurolin, right? But but that prevents any grass seed from germinating. Right. So you know you if you get you come back and see that. No no no. But you know but if you really want to get rid of this, you there there are there are there are there are oh, things okay. that you can use. Right. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay. And then oh oh I love this slide because this shows how this was this was this this was when you all were doing the testing right. for tenacity and to, the, 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 the mesotrion. But see, see all of all the white areas in, in these two slides. Yeah, that that's that's the chlorophyll that is burnt out of the creeping bent grass. So so that's you know that's how you can tell it's working. Okay, and here we go. Uh, now now right now because it's the best time to fertilize your lawn and it's also the best time to get rid of the weeds. If your lawn has more than thirty percent weed covering it, weeds covering them then it, it warrants using a weed and feed because uh, you're, you're, you're putting the fertilizer and the weed killer over the whole surface. And, um, but for many, many years, we've always said, you know, if you don't have to do over the whole surface, put the fertilizer separately and spot spray your weeds. But if you have, again, all these different weeds and you've got more than 30%, this is the time of year to use it. And you know, and it will it will get rid of that. And another method is if you just put fertilizer down and then end up using one of the hose end sprayers with the weed control. Two days later, what happens is the fertilizer actually gets the grass and the weeds stimulated, so the grass can recoup from putting a weed control on, and the weeds die because they're active and they're taking that in. And they pull that hormone right. in. So that's weed and feeds are good. And the fact that when you put it down, it does stimulate and it will kill the weeds. But, you know, if you're, if you're really into your lawn and want to do it uh, where you're going to have better controls, you fertilize and wait a few days and then, and then spray. The that it's a lot more work. But. Okay, here we go. Oh, and I'm going again. I'm, I'm repeating this. This is the, this is the, the Scott Step 1 for seeding. And then those are the two different bags. So you see the Scott step one for seeding, that larger bag is good for 5,000 square feet lawns. 
And then the smaller bag, it's turf builder and it's, it's called triple action built for seeding. They're exactly the same product, except that's a smaller bag it's, uh, that works for 4,000 square feet. I don't know why Scott's did that. It has baffled me, but I, I can never explain anything about Scott's. Right. I mean, can you? No. no. <laughs> we, we know better. Okay. Oh, this is really important. This is the worst weed that's right. out there. And, yeah. you know, and it, 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 we used to call it just ranunculus. Uh, it, was, it was ranunculus. And, um, but they changed the name to Ficaria nevis. It used to be ranunculus Ficaria. And what's bad about this, it's, it's an alien weed, meaning it, it, it comes from, uh, I believe it originally came from Asia and then, and then moved into Europe and then moved over here. It looks like the buttercup, which is one of our um, 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 uh, wildflowers, you know, native wildflowers here. But this is completely different and it has more petals. The worst thing about it is it's got um, these, uh, these um, um, tubers right. that stay under the ground and stay alive um, all, you know, all, all, they're, all they're alive all summer. And then they, they wake back up next spring. And they're shaped like figs. So that's why the nickname for this is called Fig Buttercup. And, but, but you can see, you can see lesser celandine in this wild wooded area and how it just took over the whole ground cover. And the problem with that in just about any case, whether mm -hmm. it's in your, your uh, lawn or if it's in your flower beds, it's taken up all the nutrients that your grass would normally be taking up. So it weakens the lawn going into like June. Once this plant is gone in June, your grass is trying to come in, but it didn't have a great chance that it, it wasn't able to take up a lot of the moisture and, and the um, uh, nutrients. Um, and and the, 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 the reason that this is so evil is that it has these little bulbils at the base of um, the leaves and and you can see the I'm showing you these top. photos, uh huh. And then and then this is what we call an extreme ephemeral. And once it finishes and it's flowering and it's 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 setting its seed, then it just goes completely dormant. And right. that's that. And ephemerals are the spring flowering plants like Virginia bluebells that um, that they flower, they set seed, and then they die back to the ground till the next spring. This is such an extreme ephemeral. It just completely dries back, except for the bulbils that drop to the ground and form the tubers. So it, it, is, it is terrible. And people think they've killed it if they spray it once and then all of a sudden it's gone. But then they're shocked when it comes back up the next, the next, the next season. Now, the best way to control it, and Chalet is a, a, a Roundup um, free company or glyphosate free company. So you, you want to use, we, we call those non-selective herbicides. So Natria is the company from the, uh, from the Bayer Advanced. And this is what we sell to take the place of, of, of the Roundup. It's maleic hydrazide is the active ingredient. Now, the other option is that you can use um, the, the, the selective weed killers like chickweed clover oxalis and weed beta ultra, as long as they have two of like tri triclopyr, mecaprop, dicamba, or MCPA or mecaprop and dicamba, if they have two of those ingredients, it will work on, on that, the, 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 the Ficaria nevis. Um, there, you can also use an, 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 a wonderful non-selective, uh, excuse me, this is a, this is a, this is a selective. No, it, it, this is a selective. This is um, iron-based um, herbicides, and it's called iron-headed. It's a chelated iron. And you spray that on um, any of the, the broadleaf weeds in the lawn. It does not kill the, the, the grass plants because it runs down into the soil on a grass plant because they're vertical. On a horizontal weed, it sits on top of the leaf. When the sun shines on it, it gives it iron toxicity and burns the tops off. Now, it doesn't kill um, the roots, but it is earth friendly. It's considered earth friendly. If the roots re sprout, which they will in six to eight weeks, you just keep reapplying this and kill the tops. And pretty soon the energy is completely gone. Right. And you get rid That's of it. That's the idea behind it. Uh -huh. Patience. Yeah. And so there's the iron and then. 
So, and so now with that, and I'm sure we're gonna have tons of questions. I'm seeing the questions going up, we'll answer those. Now we're at the third Eid and that's seeding. And I'm gonna let Bill talk about seeding and overseeding the lawn because he taught me all about the good stuff about this. Yeah, when you're um, looking into seeding your lawn, especially in fall, um, you, it depends on the how far you need to go with it. I mean, if your lawn is you know very brown and what have you, you may have to do a total seeding or a total renovation. Um, it is helpful no matter what to do, which we're going to get into aerations, it is helpful to put, uh, to do a seeding when you're aerating, uh, especially if your lawn is, is, is thin. Um, we want to be seeding between, really between now and October 1st is going to give you your best results. You can say, it really depends on weather and all. Sometimes you can seed till the 15th of October. But you got to consider you're going to have less germination from that. Um, but this is the best time of year, right? To do without a because, doubt, because the soil is so warm compared to what it would be in the spring. And then with the with the, the longer nights and the cooler right. night temperatures, you can keep it moisture longer. Right, and the germination when the germination happens, uh, it actually has a chance to. To, to actually grow. I mean, you get a, a good amount of uh, seed that, that will actually germinate and grow and it won't burn out because the, the temperatures are, are really in a, in a good Yeah, a they're good just time. going to be going lower and right. lower and lower and right. lower. And, and there's so, a better rest period for that grass plant overnight because it's longer uh, where it can actually have a time to rest. Yeah, and, and seeding, we usually talk about seeding um, you know, to, seeding is if you have like bare areas, right. and then overseeding is where you're just putting the seed over an existing lawn, where it, because it's thin, or because you've had diseases in it, and you're overseeding with a with a disease resistant mix, and that that's what that's the difference between seeding and overseeding. But no matter what one you're doing, you need to try and have the best soil contact that you can. Oh gosh. Yeah. Or as you would say, intimate. Yeah, yeah, I had it. I, I took in college. I took the I took the turf class, and because I said, "Oh, you know, take a turf class. You'll be the only woman in the class, and you'll meet some. You'll meet the, the, those cool turf guys." And so, so, but the, the professor was used to having mostly men. So when he talked about, you know, what this was this was Doctor Gardner, <laughs> Doctor Gardner, Dot Gardner. He was always called Dot Gardner. If you want success with seed, it has to have intimate contact with soil. So, you know, and, so and that's as true as the uh, <laughs> if the seed is sitting in the thatch, it might slightly germinate, but it won't go anywhere. It's yeah. just going to die if you can make sure you get it in. That's why we look at aerations as being. Uh huh. And we're just, oh, yeah. oh, this is, you know, this is Bill's yeah. specialty and with the photosynthesis right. and fall seeding. So I'm going to let him talk. I mean, it's safe to seed until the beginning of October. Um, it gives it enough time for the seeds to germinate and get established and survive winter. Uh, grass is used, used in lawns for full, for full, uh, full sun. The more sun, the happier they are. And virtually, you'll see seed that where they say, well, this is shade seed. Shade seed is tolerant. It's not, it's not um, it doesn't prefer shade. Shade seed would prefer more sun. Um, but we use these seeds because they can deal with, uh, especially under trees where trees are uh, overgrown and the, the, the soils, um, the root systems in the soil of trees, they like a, a, um, um, a fungal root zone and your, your turf likes a bacterial root zone. So that fine fescue, which is a very shallow seed, it can, it can have its own area and live. And that's why we go with it, whereas bluegrass likes to go down about four inches and it just can't compete with the tree seeds. Mm -hmm. So as trees grow larger, you know, uh, you need to plant more. And I always say, if you have very shaded areas, make sure you, you take shade seed because you're not putting a weed preventer down in there. Shade seed and sprinkle it down about uh, once a month. Add some act actual seed to it lightly, but- um, Just to keep it thick. 
Right, it will just, it'll end up giving you more and more and it gives you more tolerance, especially as seeds, um, like even our seeds from year to year, something changes in them. And again, it gives it more of a tolerance. And and then, oh, the, the, yeah, the fall overseeding, you know, yeah. again, overseeding, repairing thin or bare areas. Um, this is what our seed labels used to look like. I, I love those back then. Yeah. And and then and then the reason you do it in the fall is because you know the cell temperatures are warmer and and it, you have a higher higher much higher success rate. Yeah, you you're this. paying for grass seed and you don't want to put something down that's not yeah. going to germinate. And, now so. this okay and uh the, the, the reasons to oversee i think we've touched on this right. you know so let's keep then we'll keep moving here and you use you use a spreader you know yeah, a, a you know. large spreader right. or a hand spreader and because you want to and you want to have a good even application right if you're throwing the seed a lot of times you'll you'll have little areas that'll have pockets of heavy seed when that seed germinates, the problem with that is it competes with each other and you'll see it turn yellow and die off. I was going to show you, this is the um, the chart, right. I think, we don't go back. This is the chart um, that used to be on our seed, see the, the bottom right, picture, below the bun. where it shows it's too little on the, the far left, too heavy on the far right. If you if you put too much seed down and then all germinates, it'll, it'll out-compete each other. And then the middle one is just right. This is the owner, Andy uh, Greenspan of um, Irving's. And then he let me go behind the counter. I was always saying to, to Bill, you know, and, and when we were doing these lectures, and I said, look, the seed matches the, the poppies on the, the Rosen's bun. He goes, you ought to go take a picture. <laughs> so Andy let me go behind the counter to get a picture. And that was my dog. That was my <laughs> lunch that time. So, so she, and, and I, I don't think, I don't, let's keep moving here. And um, and then oh no, because or aeration. Aeration. About that. Aerations are probably the second best thing you could do for you mechanically for your lawn, aside from mowing. Um, aeration will take a plug up. That plug goes on the top of the soil, and it breaks down into different areas. Everybody thinks that they, you know, I got soil in my lawn, and it's all the same. It's not. It can be several different types of soil you have in in your own backyard so what it does is it helps to spread that around it opens up your lawn for air it opens it up for fertilizer and it opens it up for moisture and remember that when you water the moisture pulls air behind it so that brings it further oxygen further down and that's what the grasses need and i was going to yeah. show you that where you know right the, the diagram it shows when you pull those plugs out and then oxygen and you know and 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 it gets down in and and, and deeper in the soil and the roots say ooh yeah. it's not so bad to grow down here and they grow more deeply so if you have a deeper soil or a deeper um, root system in the soil you have a much healthier um you know, top part of, of of it but keep in mind that when you're going under trees the, those root systems that find fescue, that normally will not go any further than an inch or an inch and a half. And what ends up happening sometimes with using an aerator in, in a shaded, I'm talking more deeply shaded, it just rips the grass up because the grass root systems are shallow to begin with. So don't, don't aerate it. Don't shade. aerate it under trees. I, you know, I mean, if it's, if you got bluegrass growing under trees and the trees are Cut high enough, I you may get away with it, but Otherwise, no. yeah, I don't suggest that. And this is the best time of year. And and there's there are liquid aerifiers um, that that you can right. use in the shaded. And this is a good example of a shaded lawn because right. you see this, the the trees with the high canopy. And um, so you know, so don't core aerate if you have a you have a shade. Virtually, what that product is. It has the same chemicals in shampoo, and that's what breaks down the, the dirt and what have you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's just much stronger, but wow. Okay. And so so now we're just gonna go through some of the diseases and insects that you have to, you know, kind of be aware of. Summer patch, we're seeing a lot of summer patch. This is a disease that inoculates the grass plants in May, uh, when the cell temperatures are in the 60s, and then and then it, it attacks either the roots or the crown. And then it's sort of like when you have a cold, you keep going to work, you keep doing what you do. And, and, and then if you get good, you know, good rest and good food, 
then, um, then you know, you get over the cold. If you don't get good rest, you don't get good food, it turns into pneumonia. And that's kind of what happens with summer patch, any of the fungal patch diseases on the lawn. Once we've had hotter, drier, hotter, drier weather, and it stresses the grass plants out, then these patches show up usually in July. It's usually about six to eight weeks after it was inoculated. So like May 15th, all of a sudden they start showing up from July 15th up into August 15th and everyone comes in and you can put them under the microscope and see, you know, and see the, the, the fungal um, um, sporulation. Uh, but the best thing to do is pre prevent it in the spring. You know, you know the it. other thing with this is that if you find that you do have or you see this and you're not sure, if you can dig out some of the root system, put it in a baggie and seal it, and a lot of times you'll end up getting within 12 hours a white furry looking substance. If you go for two days, you, you're not, it's not going to tell you anything. But after 12 hours, it'll generally tell you if you actually have a, that disease. Yes, and that's the mycelium. But right. and then this is this is a Kentucky bluegrass microscopic look where you can see the one healthy root here is surrounded by all the dark roots that that that, that had a rot from the Magna Porta yeah, or the summer patch. And this is from Dr. Derek Settle. Right. And he's back at the um the at, at the, the, the the Chicagoland Golf Soil borne diseases are very difficult to control. And so what these are the preventatives that we'd use next May, um immunox, hose and sprayer, infuse, and bioadvance has. And they're it's they're either uh microbutanol or propiconazole. And they're excellent, excellent. They're systemic they stay in the plants for 14 days, even if it rains, and they prevent the diseases. Okay, and so then dollar spots, another one. Right, we're still yeah. seeing dollar spots. Mm, yeah. But, but it's, uh, that's something, again, you wanna put one of those fungicides down in, in spring when the soil temperatures, I don't know where you can check, you guys. Oh, uh, we, we, post, we post soil temperatures so post, on our webpage. When you take yeah. a look on the webpage and you see that the soil temperatures are 55 degrees. You want to put it down and then you want to do another when it's about 62 degrees. Mm -hmm. So like two able, weeks later. Right, mm -hmm. You should be able yeah. to cover the my, my sodium on that. And then, and then when you bring the grass blades in, this is how they look and you have that hourglass you know, lesion on it. Right. And we can actually see that without using the microscope, but it's really cool to get right. in the as microscope. As soon as you look at the turf itself, you'll see these small little dots. Mm -hmm. They're and like that, dollar size. Right. Dollar silver, dollar size spots. That's that's yeah. why it's called dollar spot. Yeah. Okay, and then oh, then these are the insects that you're going to see. Chinch bug was mm -hmm. not as bad. This not this year, year at all. Uh, it has been in the past. Last year it was horrible. Uh -huh. From year to year, you never know, and they're not sure why. I mean, some are saying possibly that it, it has to do with the real cold temperatures we had in spring. Oh yeah. They they really don't know. I mean. This is what the insect yeah. looks like. And the larva, the larva chew the blades off and then they have uh, saliva that is toxic to the grass plants. So that's why you see, you see, and they eject it. So that's why yeah. you'll see the, you know, dead sections of the grass. And then this is what it looks like, you know, when, you know, when you have that and that you start looking, but you also look for pieces of grass that have fallen over because they've right. been chewed off. It's not going to necessarily come back. That's when you probably want to make sure you see those areas. Exactly. Um, and then this is what you use to control. You know, the grub eggs actually takes care of all these different insects. And these are the only insects that, that, the, that the new <coughs> grub eggs, um, and, you know, controls. So it's two different grubs, the, um, the armyworm caterpillar, chinch bug, um, uh, the crane fly, and then the bill bug. We don't see bill bugs that no. much in this area no. at all, but it's only labeled for those six insects, nothing else. And what it does, it doesn't attack the um, the neurotransmitters, the nerves uh, on the insects of the insects. It attracts the calcium ports in the muscles. And if they ingest this or they crawl through it, then they get affected by it, and then all they're paralyzed because the calcium floods out of their muscles and they stop feeding, and it prevents the damage. But it doesn't kill them right away. So you may still have problems right. with the wildlife right. digging yeah. them up. And this is a close up of the grubs and shows the life cycle of the grubs and how they, they go, they dig down into the soil over winter to survive. And if we don't freeze deeply enough, then many of them come back up. And in the spring, 
they come back up to the surface, they pupate and emerge as either June beetles and or the Japanese beetles. Japanese beetles are a little bit later. We haven't seen much of that this year. Not at all. And then this is, if you have more than 12 grubs in a square foot area, they can cause enough damage eating enough roots off that you'll get, you'll get you know, dead areas. But most often you get damage from wildlife. This bottom picture was my neighbor's yard where the squirrels came in and just dug up the whole thing looking for grubs. These are the Japanese beetle grubs, same thing, but a little different time schedule in, in it. And now if you do have a problem, if you do see the, the grubs this time of year, you use the 24 hour kill. It's Dilox is the active ingredient. It kills the insects in 24 hours, and it only lasts in the cell about three to five days. So it's a quick kill. And again, be very careful with using it. Make sure you have proper mm -hmm. gloves and shoes. Uh, yeah, don't do it don't. barefoot. Right. And then this, the, again, this is, again, the damage that we, we usually see. We, we'll, have, we'll have raccoons and, and skunks. Will dig up the whole lawn looking for one per square right. foot. Or where they remember it. And if be. they had a good meal, yeah, they'll they had come the back. Year, the year before. Okay, this was my own neighborhood skunk. And it, he's, he, he's done some damage you know, in my own lawn. So, so, and then again, these are, you know, these are the damage. Raccoons and squirrels will do this. At squirrels, skunks. Yeah. And I, I keep calling yeah. the skunks squirrels. And these raccoons will roll and skunks dig. Dig and tear. So if you see your sod has been rolled back, you know you got raccoons. Yeah. If it's dug up, then it's skunks. It's skunks, okay. And then the repellents to take care of those, repels off. You have a granular form and you, we have one, this bag that's right here will cover 3,000 square feet. So you can put it in a spreader and just spread it all over the lawn and it lasts for two months. There's also a liquid you can spray. Plant skeet is wonderful and you know it will repel um, and in it, 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 it also we have a granular form and then also a liquid form. Both if you apply them will 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 stay in the areas that are applied for 60 days. And so they're they're very, 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 very effective. Oh now now we're back just to the supplemental water. We're at yeah. the very end, we're almost running out of time. And so it's Okay, the guideline is at 75 degrees or cooler, we should be getting an inch of rain a week. For every 10 degrees above 75, you, you need another half inch of rain. So like this summer, when it was 85 degrees, we should have been getting an inch and a half of rain every week, and we weren't getting it. We weren't getting it. So, so I like to, you know, to, you know to, when you set up your irrigation system and calibrate it, what that means is you need to figure out how much water is being delivered based on your sprinkler, you know, your, your sprinkler head or your sprinkler system. And you set these containers out and then measure how much water and measure the time it takes to get a half inch of water in, in the containers. And then that's how long you want to run your sprinkler three times a week to get a, an inch and a half, the equivalent of an inch and a half of rain. And then by doing it multiple times during the week, you reduce the transpiration um, uh, 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 rate risk. You know, if it if you if you would water heavily an inch and a half one day and not water again for a week later, um, I like to equate that to if you drank a gallon of water on Sunday yeah. and you didn't drink anything till next Sunday, would you be thirsty? Right, yeah. You know, so and that's what can happen. You know, you and plants can get stressed just waiting for you know the the water application. So. So you have to do that, and then there. This was this was this was the watering, and and then the only other thing we have to talk about for fall is the final mold. Yeah, don't uh, don't be afraid of leaving your clippings. I I've left my clippings. At, again, if you mow your own lawn, if you have a service, they don't leave. Most of them won't leave the clippings, including chalet. Yeah. Because uh, most customers like that clean look, but I've left my my clippings now for I don't know seven years or so and um, it puts you, a lot of uh, nutrient back in right you, 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 don't lose have to a, apply. you lose a pound of nitrogen over a whole year if you take up the clippings and you pay for the nitrogen you're paying for the fertilizer and but most people um encourage you to mow it to two inches in which normally we want you to keep the, the grass at, at three right. four inches right you don't want to fall the over. growing season but if you can mow it more, more, a little more short uh, in that last mow, so they don't, it, it doesn't get crushed over under the right, snow. Right, because at that point, the 
the plant itself is not really taking in a lot of sunlight. You know, it, it's still taking some in, especially if it's green, but not nearly as much as it did maybe a month earlier. So. And 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 that's this is the, the final mow is usually in November. Right. And then um and then this is what your lawn will look like if you've done everything that we talked to you about. <laughs> right. Yeah, well. <laughs> this was an award winning. Um, shade lawn that Bill supervised. This is probably we, about. We still do this lawn. You still do it? Yeah. Isn't it gorgeous? You know, so, so, so again, you know, and, and then, and then when you put the, we put the lawn to bed properly, it helps it to wake up more, more healthy in the spring. That's the bottom line. Uh huh. So, That's the bottom yeah. line. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to stop the share. And then um, here we go. And then I'm gonna uh, open up the, the Q and A column here, and it's gonna go in the middle. All right. So we're gonna start Jan uh, at Kevel. Kevel, uh, how do weed killers affect the environment? Um, um, if used when used properly, um, it's 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 not a problem. They're hormones. They're plant hormones. So the herbaceous weed killers. The reason you can put them on the lawn and it doesn't kill the grass is that they're hormones. And so you put it on, they're absorbed into the weed, it kills the weed, and then they break down and 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 it's it's not a problem. Right after 24 hours, if, if it hasn't, generally 24 to 48 hours, if it hasn't killed the weed, um, that's as effective as it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they break down. It just exactly. uh, it breaks down. Okay, now, Mark, um, I, I, I think it's Guchera. I have crabgrass, but also need to overseed. Shall I apply crabgrass killer first, and how long should I wait to overseed? That's a great question. Well, you can use, if you're going to overseed, and I don't know if you have any other weeds other than crabgrass, but you can use the starter fertilizer or mesotrion. It will kill crabgrass. On the other hand, Crabgrass is going to die when we get a uh, heavy freeze and it's not a, a perennial. So it's seeded itself. And next year you can use that mesotrione, the fertilizer mesotrione, and that will stop any weeds from coming in. You can seed with mesotrione. Yeah, that, that, that's the key. That's that granular. That's the, that's the stop right. step on for seeding. Um, the, other, um, the other thing there, bonide, I think it's, it is bonide, has um, a, it's called a, a weed beater ultra plus, which is a, a spray that is for crabgrass and also other weed killers. And the recommendation on that is to wait two weeks after you've sprayed it and then overseed with with new seed. Okay, I, th I think that answers that. I think that answers your question pretty well. Okay, there we go. And okay, the next one. Um, Dillis, Dillis, and I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that right, Dillis Rana, will you be talking about what to do with bald patches in the lawn? Ours have persisted all through the summer despite having seeded and watered them. Okay, we did touch on that during, you know, during the lecture that now is the better time to do this, you know, just, 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 you know, scratch up, you know, just scratch up the, the bare spots a little bit. So there's nooks and crannies. So those, those soil contact, and so, his soil contact. Yeah. <laughs> intimate contact yeah. with the soil. So and so so the, the needle shaped grass seeds stick in and then, you know, use the use the chart that I should, we showed you in the slide. And if you want to come to the information desk at the at, at the plant clinic, I have that I have that chart. I'll have it up on a stand so you can you can see it and um, and then you'll have really much better luck than trying to see during the hot, that hot, right. dry summer. During the summer, you get was maybe, I don't know, 5% mm. germination. And what germinates will probably die anyhow. Because it's so, so hot and so dry. Yeah. Okay. And then Sarah Brady, uh, you say, don't call Creeping Charlie, but maybe I missed what is the best way to get rid of it. Um, the, the, the best way is to use the chickweed clover and oxalis uh, killer. It is, it's labeled for killing creeping Charlie because of the triclopyre that's in it. It's best to spray that. Now I used to have, and, and you would talk about waiting till the first hard freeze. Uh, we also had, remember Doug, remember yeah, Doug, yeah, yeah. I, I, he was our rep, he was right. one of our reps. He would come in and says, I know the best way to do it. Do the Doug dance on it. Yeah. And, and he would, he would, he would, he would, he would take, 
his teeth and just twist them all over on top of the creeping Charlie and then spray it with the, um, the weed killer, the herbicide, because it's cracking when you walk on it and really you know, dance around on it, it cracks the waxy cuticle. So it, it's hard to kill creeping Charlie because it's got that waxy cuticle and the liquid or, you know, weed killers just beat up and roll off. So if you walk all over it and dance on it, then spray it, it, it goes into the nooks and crannies and the cracks and it kills it better. So, um, so I hope that I hope that answers. I hope that answers. Your, do the dog dance, okay? And then, oh, Sarah, again, if you aerate it in spring, do you need to aerate again? You know, are there additional steps with, with the yard to take when overseeding to help the seeds germinate? Okay, so aerating in spring is not always the best way to go. I mean, it's you can do it, especially if you find that your thatch layer is very thick. If you got heavy thatch. Uh, you can you can do it in spring. We always suggest uh, we only do aerations in fall, and the reason being is that the, the turf is able to recover much better from it. it. It is still somewhat hard on the turf when you're taking plugs and cutting plugs, but the advantage, of course, is that all of a sudden it stimulates those plants that are left behind and they spread into those areas. But I would seed and aerate in fall because seeding in fall is the best time. And your aeration in fall, of course, like I say, is the best time to recover the plant. What, one of the best things, if you really want good success with, with overseeding or you know, seeding an existing lawn, is to get it slit seeded. But that you you have to you know pay someone to do that, and, and you know there's a hopper that holds the seed, and the machine cuts slits a half inch deep and puts the seeds right into them. And so that's the best way to do it. But but most homeowners. Are not doing these slit seeding. So I would say the best thing is to consistently keep it consistently moist. And that means watering once in the morning and once in the afternoon, and you get the highest success rate doing that. If you really are, are conscientious about the watering, you really get good, you know, good germination. Right. Yeah. And, and good establishment. Uh, good questions. These are great questions. Okay. Now this is Marsha and Kozel. Or, and, and we need suggestions on aerating our yard. Lots of thin spots. Our yard is on a hill. Oh, so it's impossible to get a heavy um, aerator up up the stairs. Um, well, if you use a professional right. company, that they can go up hills and 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 over. You know, I they have two guys with them normally, maybe three, and they can carry. The two of them can carry, possibly carry them up the stairs. I don't know how high the stairs are, but sometimes they. I mean, there's unusual conditions that that we have to bring our aerators to you know so it's possible or not only us i mean if you get somebody to aerate your lawn just ask them if they can do that show them that right away um if, if the best way to do that is go to uh the chalet web page the landscape web page and it says you know contact us um you know um, and and then you fill out kind of a, a question and answer form and tell you what you want, and then someone will get back to you within um, three to five days to um, to give you a bid and to tell you whether they can do it or not. Okay, good, good, good question. Okay, and then um, Karen, I think it's Karen Kennedy. My lawn guy has made ruts where he turns the riding mower. Oh God, mine does that too. Don't you hate that? Yeah. In in my lawn, what's the best way to reseed these areas? It's very shady. Um, I just use a good shade, you know, a good a shade. A good shade seed because mm -hmm. you, if there are ruts, you should still be seeing soil. And if you can see soil, you put the seed down right on the soil. And just keep it really nice. <clears throat> you know, yeah, you can you can put nice lightly nice. over it, um, like a, a topsoil or whatever, very light. Right. And they, when, if, 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 if people <clears throat> want to cover it, we always say you only go with the thickness of soil and don't do peat moss. Right. Never do peat moss, and 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 really don't do straw either. Um, but you know, just if you if you really need to cover it, um, then just the soil only as thick as the seed is. And if you look at seed, you realize it's not very thick at all. So so okay, here we go. And then this is try. Um, how far before feed weed and seed should you aerate? Also, what's the time between feed? weed and seeding process? Oh, good questions. Um, uh, you know, 
I I would say fertilize, and a week later you can aerate. Right. And, and then you can overseed the same day. Right. That you, you that you day. that you aerate because you want to get this you want to get the seed into the 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 holes where the it's open soil. And wait about three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then wait three weeks before you kill yeah. the weeds. Right. Yeah. Good question. Okay. And all right. Then here we go. Then this is M. Uh, will using Milorgan and Alon with heavy clover promote more clover clover growth? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no matter what fertilizer you use with with clover, uh -huh. you're going to promote clover growth because mm -hmm. the fertilizer will stimulate it. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry that. Unless you want clover. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, and then this is Gail. Uh, do you use do you use either Scott Step Four or Espoma Lawn Food or both? Uh, that's a good question. I prefer um, the Espoma Lawn Food, but I've been using it for oh my gosh, probably twenty years, and I I love it. I I think it's great. And then the cool thing about the Espoma Lawn Food, it's enough for six thousand square feet. So a lot of people with smaller lawns use it as their fall application, and then they use the other half for the winterizer. So, um, and step four, uh, we don't sell the step four here at Chalet, so I can't really answer that because yeah. I don't know what the formulation. You know, it's it's a good product if you own it. it it's it's straight fertilizer. Step four is always straight fertilizer. I at least know that. Right. But um, and it's, so, it's, so you don't have to worry about you know an herbicide or an, an insecticide you know in, in it. So e either one, either one, it, it's going to be wonderful. Nitrogen is methylene urea, I believe. Uh -huh. and so it's a methylene slow release. Re yeah, that's a slow release. So it's a good fertilizer. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Now, anonymous. How do you get rid of thistle? Ooh. Well, you have to hand pull it if it's already started. You know, and and it's and it's it's a big chunky clunky weed. But if you use a pre-emergent in um you know in the early season, um it will keep it from germinating. You know, and um you can also spray it with chickweed clover and oxalis, and and it will right. it will kill it. It will kill it. Okay, next one. Why well, we had a lot of questions, and we're doing great. Uh, Laura Hayes, apologies if I miss this. Is there anything specific I should use on dandelions? Um, the just the chickweed clover and right. oxalis, and then and then you know you know because it it it's it's a perennial weed. You really need to use something that's going to kill the top and it's going to be take translocated down to kill the root because it has that big long tap root. Because I mean you can actually pull a dandelion for like five years in a row. Right. Okay? If you don't and get the root out, either. it just comes back. It just comes back. It just comes in the back. same exact spot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but you can also use, you know, a dandelion weeder uh, that, you know, that digs deep and pries the whole root up. You, know, you can do that too. But um, I, 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 I actually believe in the power of chemistry. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, so, okay. So here, that, good question. Very good question. Um, mm -hmm. Then this is, oh, Usha. Hi, Usha. Super talk. Thank you. Oh, what a nice look. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, and then um, Deanna, should I take the time to spray my crabgrass now if it is an annual and it's going to die anyway? That's a great question. Yeah, I wouldn't. For uh, my lawn, I wouldn't do it. And, and when in their life cycle do they throw their seeds? They're doing it now. Right. So if you've had crabgrass, then you make sure that you do a pre-emergent next spray. spring. So get the Scott step one for seeding for next spring, and that will go down in between April 15 and May 1st, right. you know, is the best time to use that. But, um, but yeah, I, I, you know, if it's going to die in the first hard freeze, you know, don't, right. don't bother to spray. And if you do get it, then there is a post, uh, emerge, uh, post for, um, weed control. Uh -huh. And, and that's the chickweed clover. Right. Like and yeah. Okay. And, oh, here's Susan. Hi, Susan. Should I use Dilox or repels all to prevent critters? From digging in the fall. Oh, Dilox just kills the the insects. So you you want to yeah. use Repelzol to keep the the critters from digging. Right. Make good, sure good you question. have gloves before you put down Dilox. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So just the Repelzol is a better thing. Repelzol or the plant skeed. It, it works very very effectively. Uh, and this is PA. It's not showing your whole name. For new slit seed done yesterday. Ooh, bravo, bravo. 
How frequently should I water? Uh, your side said one to two times per day. The instructions was given said keep moist. What right, that would be one to two times a one day. One to two times a day, this depending time on the, the temperature. Year, mm -hmm. Right, this time of the year. I mean, if you're, if we're, when we get back into the 80s, which I think we're going to Next be, week. Yeah, you might want to do a little more. You want to, um, it, it's not where you have to heavy water, but you want to keep the surface moist where the seed, where the seed would germinate. So two, maybe three times a day. It just depends. Yeah, so keep moist. Yeah, that, right. don't you love those keep moist? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, once in the morning and then once again, you know, like as soon as you get home from work and or four o'clock. You know, is you know yeah. if you're if you're home, you know if you're home during the day. Great question. Oh, you're gonna love how the slit seeding works. It's just so yeah. great. It's so it's one of the best things you can do. And then this is Jane Friedman. Is it good? Uh, is a good idea to add compost to yourself before seeding? Um, you know, I, I like adding compost after you've core aerated, right? Because it'll get down in the plugs. Um, you know, if, if you're gonna do compost over seeds. Make it, it light. very thin, very thin, very thin. Uh, if it gets too heavy, all the seed does is rot on them. It, yeah, so it's so, so you want it is it, they generally save the thickness of the seed. Exactly. Not, not very not thick. Right. Not yeah. oh, I didn't do that. Let's see. This and then do that. I'll go down like that. Okay. And then this is uh Julian. We use the Scott's subscription, okay, where they send us four applications a year. At appropriate times, that's great. Uh, is this a good time, or should we take more targeted approach? Uh, it's a great program. Yeah. Just follow follow right. the instructions. I mean, okay. always look to see what your lawn is looking like. Uh -huh. You know, you got to take a look at that and see if you need something else or you don't need something else. Um, you, it may be just that it's controlling everything, and your lawn is as long as the lawn looks great. Keep doing it. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it, it's a great product. Yeah. And, you know, but as long as you do it according to the application times, if you miss a time, then um, the grass plants really suffer and, and then they, they lose their color. And, you know, it's it, again, it, it's like I explained earlier, it's like giving a man a fish and with, with Scott's, you know, because you're giving them the food at the right time. And if you're not encouraging a lot of microbial growth, to 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 supply the food on its own, but it's a great it's a great product. Right. It's a great product. They're excellent products. Okay, and here we go. And then Deanna, how often should you water grass seed? I think we've talked about this. Right. Uh, should you treat it like it, it like uh, oh like it's uh, like a newly planted perennial? Uh, it feels like I'm washing the seed away. Well, you don't want to water real heavily, right? You water because you lightly. can wash the seed away, but you water lightly. And that's why I always tell people, make sure you've watered heavily the areas before you put the seed down. And then, then it's moist to begin with. Then watering lightly keeps it moist. And putting yeah. a, maybe a top so light topsoil over it will hold it in place. Uh, uh -huh. And some of the newer seeds now have, have uh, are covered. Coatings. Coatings. And they actually stick in place so it doesn't wash off as quickly. Right. And we have we have a couple of those um at, at the store here right. in, in, in chalet that are coated. And then our um our sun grass seed is coated with a, a, a calcine clay and that keeps it moister too. That's why it's blue when you look at the package. Right. The seeds are coated. So you know so they, they stay moister longer. And supposedly you have a mm -hmm. fungicide and a little fertilizer. Ooh I've forgotten that. Yeah. Man. Okay, here's Sarah Brady. Thanks, great information today. Well, thank you. Well, I think yeah. this great guy. Yeah, I thank think, you. I, I think, you know, Bill Lewenberger, yeah. he has inspired me all these years. I, I'm, just, I'm just the researcher and put together all the, you know, you all, the all, all the PowerPoints, yeah. but I'm, I'm also a geek. I yeah, also, I'm a yeah, geek, so yeah. I love to learn all this stuff. So, so y'all have been wonderful. Um, Let's check that we're done with all the, the Q and A column, and I'm just going to check. Uh, well, and we didn't have chats. Oh, I'm proud of you all, uh -huh. and we still have 38 people stayed with us wow. all the way through. Wow! Wow! Oh, there's well, one thank more you for Sticking with us. Yeah, you guys. Oh, here's here's Marsh. Uh, oh, it's Marcia. Oh, thanks for all your great advice. Oh, another yeah. wonderful thank you. 
Well, everybody, um, you know, have a wonderful, wonderful um, fall. Yeah. And, you know, and and it, it started we'll out. Call us anytime. It is started out, you know, really lovely. Yeah, definitely call us anytime. Bring your samples in. Um, we can always, we can always diagnose. I, I have a hotline to this guy. Yeah. So even though he only works one day a week, <laughs> I can I always, always I always, I can always get to him. So, so you all, thank you so much. This has been our pleasure to do this with you and for you. So um, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye y'all. Bye. And here we go. Ending and ending.